hello everyone welcome back again my name is jesse and in this one tutorial we're trying to see how to use a very nice library called pop to do linear programming in python so what is linear programming so simply put linear programming is a form of optimization so there are several forms of optimization we have genetic programming we have linear programming dynamic programming and the rest but linear programming is one of them so the concept behind linear programming is that you are trying to achieve the best outcome in a mathematical model when you are giving certain forms of constraints, right? That's a basic idea. So you're trying to maximize or minimize an objective function, which is subject to some constraint. So that is the basic idea behind linear programming. So let's see the various types of optimization problem and then the various ways we can solve them. So there are several classification, but it's one of the simplest ones. So we have a convex optimization problem and then a non convex one, right? So linear programming is found under the convex type of optimization problem so let's see the usefulness why should i even learn linear program what's the benefit so as we learned earlier on we are trying to not just find any solution but find the optimal solution right giving some constraint that is the basic idea behind linear program so it can be used in several fields such as in manufacturing like in engineering statistics in public health in it and several other fields so that is the benefit of learning program linear programming so let's see some basic terms you should understand before we move on so the basic terms is that we have some variables right so these are the objective variables and we have some decision variables so the decision variables are the var variables that will decide my output whether i'm going to get my profit or i'm going to get my loss right that is the basic idea then we have the objective function which is the goal or the objective of making the decision what we want to achieve so do you want to maximize something do you want to minimize something that is the basic idea behind the objective function and which is easy to find in case you are given a problem then the most difficult to understand and to find is the constraints right the restrictions or the limitations on your decision variable so the usually the constraints will shape how you are going to obtain the objective right so the constraints going to it's, it's your limitation your restrictions how much of your resources you have and what is the limit of how you can use your resources to achieve your goal that's a basic idea then you also have non-negativity restriction which is actually non-negativity that means that it must not be a negative it must be from zero and then above right that is these are the basic terms to understand when working with linear programming so let's see some packages that can help us in doing linear programming in several other aspects we have pop we have scipy these are the two most commonest one then in case you also want to do miss integer linear program you also have this particular package MELP, which can also help you to do that so let's see how to solve any basic linear programming problem so the first thing is that you must define your variables right that's the first step step one step two then you must create your objective function which is easy to get then step three which is defining your constraint which is sometimes difficult so sometimes you can make a lot of mistake in a particular place so let's pick a simple linear problem and then we will solve it and then later on we'll move on to a more complex one which is usually like in the format of a key study so this is when it becomes difficult but in this particular format it is easy because by by default this is going to be the objective function which you are trying to maximize and then these are going to be the constraint that is what is subject to right so if it's if you are given a question like this it's easy to solve or a question like this so by default this is going to be the objective function and then these are going to be your constraints so this is easy to solve but where it becomes difficult is when you have a case study like this and supposed to find your objective function your constraint and the rest so let's start with a simple one first then you move on to a more complex one so we'll be using pop to help us with that so i'm just going to go to the, this place then i'm going to load our package so be important pop so import pop i don't know whether i can see it well then let's see the various things we can do with pop so if i go with dll pop you can see that we can do a lot of things with pop so these are some of the things we can do Groby, we can also check for the constraints here we can create maximize or minimize we can set the problem we can do a lot of things we can specify our variables as a single variable or as a collection of variables right in addition format of a dictionary and the rest so let's see how to work with it we'll be starting from scratch here so we have this our question here right which are trying to solve no this is not a question but let's check the one above then we'll do that one later so let me hide this one so we have this question there are a lot of questions but we'll be picking some of them we have this simple stuff so we're supposed to maximize z right which is 5x plus 10y 
which is subject to this constraint. So how do you do that with pop? How do you do that in code? So the simplest way that first of all, the first step is you must define your variables. Define your variables. Define variables, right? So that's the first step, right? So from here, we can see that we have two variables. We have X and Y. These are our main variables that you'll be defining. The next step is to, to create our problem. So let's define a variable. So let's call it as we have x and y so let's make it like x is going to be pop i don't know whether i can see it well let me expand it hope you can see okay right this is better pop dot lp then you first of all go with your variables so realize that we had our variables here i hope you remember this thing when we sh which was shown inside our stuff we have this variable so that's what we are using to create our variables then after that we're going to define our problem then you start solving so lp dot variable now passing the first value which is going to be the variable x right then i'll give it my lower my lower bound which is as we learned it's supposed to be a non-negativity constraint so it's going to be lower bound lower bound which the lower bound here is going to be zero that's the simplest stuff you'll be doing perfect right so that's going to be for the s variable which we have defined our first variable which is x the next one is going to be the next one which is going to be our y so y is going to be this option so let's change this one to y right so it's going to store these particular variables in, in this s and y then you'll be able to use it to do whatever you want to do so we have done the first step of defining our variables the next one is to work on the objective function so let's be our objective function and as we said if you are given something like this it is very easy to know the objective function so this is the objective the objective is to maximize z and the function has been given so we can just use the same thing to help us with that so i'm just going to first of all state the problem so let's call it as max maximize z right then i'll just go with my pop dot lp problem we first give it some description which is going to be the something i want to do so i want to maximize maximize z right so you can do it like this maximize z but it's better you put underscore so that there's no space but automatically going to convert it right in case it doesn't have it then i'll just specify what i want to do so it's going to be help going to be pop dot lp maximize that's what i'm doing maximize that is all right so it's going to work on it so that it's given us space is not permitted in the name so that is why i said you, you can make it underscore right but it's still going to work anyway perfect now let's define our objective function so it's going to be max z maximize z then i will just go with plus is equal to so the plus is equal to me that keep on adding till you get the particular value right so keep on adding this thing so we're just going to take off the z the z is what you are trying to maximize so keep on adding different variables changing the x and y till you get the maximum value that's the meaning of the plus is equal to that is the basic idea so it's giving us an error here so the reason it's giving us this error is because we are supposed to multiply it right and then the variables there is x and then y not capital so that is something so multiply this and then this right so we are this x and y refers to this x and y which we define above and then this is going to be our objective function perfect so we are done so that is something very simple so the next step is to define our constraint that is step two that, that is constraint so by default you this is our constraint which i've been given already so it is easy in case you are given constraint like this so i'll just come back here it's going to be constraint and i'll just go with this option right so we have to make sure that we we keep on adding to our problem that we specified above so max z plus is equal to right so keep on adding to because we have defined it here so we are keeping on keeping on adding this constraint to our function that we have and we have, we have to make sure that this is multiplication Right, and this S and Y must be must conform to this one. So let's make it smaller then. So Y and this is going to be the same thing. Apologies for this. We could have made it capital, but let's make it like this. So S and then Y. And then this one must also be two by Y, small Y. And then this one is going to be X. So that is how to do that in case you are giving something like this so this is simple right very interesting now we can see what you have done because i want to preview the entire stuff so it's going to be my print max 
Z, right? So max Z is going to give me everything. So the description is that this is we are maximizing Z, and what we are doing is we are doing maximization, right? And this is going to be our objective function, and then this is going to be our constraint. So the underscore C1, we have first constraint, second constraint, and then third constraint, and our variables are continuous. Very interesting. That is all that you have done. So the next step is to move on. So before we solve it, we can check for the status of what you have done so far. So we can just do the same with, with pop dot lp status. Right. And from here, I can specify what I want to do. And then I can just put in my max z dot status. So be, be, because you have not solved it, because you have not optimized it, it's going to give us as not solved right but after i have solved it after i've optimized it now it's going to work perfectly so to get your optimized optimal som solution is using solve or optimization it means the same thing here i can just go with my max z dot so if i go with this option now it's going to solve it and give us the right result so one means that that's gotten the optimal solution so if i go back and i check for the status here now it's going to tell me that it is solved right optimal very interesting that means that we have gotten our results so to so how do we get the right values the right decision variables why how do we get the right values for our objective function which we have x and y how do we get these particular values so there are several ways so the first way is that just getting the values the first way is just go with my s which we stored then just go with var value that's the first way let's go with print right that is the first way let me copy it for the y also right so this is going to be for y so that is the first method right of getting our values so if i run it it's going to give us a 60 and 30 very interesting so this is the maximum this is the optimal values that we can put inside our equation our optimization function for it to give us the maximum z right that's the basic idea this is one of the ways the second method is just go with a for loop it's going to be method two before this is going to be a simple for loop right so it's like it's going to be for let's say var value variable in my max z dot variables dot var yeah those right then i'm going to look through them so let's go with something simple so print what i'm printing is I'm printing the var dot name the variable name then let's make it like this we can use a string if you want so let's make it roll right then i'll pass in my last value which is going to be my bar dot bar value as above so this is the next option so it's going to give us the same thing so 60 and 30. this is the second method of getting the optimal value so if i go back to my function which we had as my max z right this max z and I put in this 60 and then 30 into this particular value that is going to give us the optimal solution right so you can do it yourself or you can allow pop to do it for you by coming back to this place to get the op to get the value you can allow pop to do it for you by coming back to this place right so that is going to be pop this is to get the optimal value right it's going to get the optimal value when you place it inside the objective function so, so it's going to be pop dot value and i'll pass in my objective function of z dot objective objective and so if i run it like that it's going to give me 600 right so which is the same thing as above so if i have the same thing here without the zero if i copy this one and i put in our values the value that we had which was 60 and 30 60 was x if I put in apologies if I put in 60 here was x and then 30 was y is going to also going to give me 30 was y right if I run it like that's going to give me 600 so that is how to use pop to do linear programming right so this is simple in case you are giving something like this right this is very simple in case you are giving something like that it's quite easy to do you know your objective function right you define that one then you define your constraints right this is simple so we just go back and create your variables the first step you define the objective function then you set your constraint then you can just call the function solve on it then you get your values right very simple and very interesting now let's move on to something difficult so we will skip this one 
and then move on to something difficult right something like this this is more difficult so let's see how to do that so this is a simple question that says that a company makes two products s and y i got it from this particular URL. the company makes two products s and y right using two machines so that means that what you are looking at is product s and product y using two machines machine a and machine b so each unit of s that is produced requires 15 minutes present time on machine a and 30 minutes present time on machine b so machine a machine a produce both s and y machine b produce both f s and y but it uses different times right so each unit of y that is produced requires 24 minutes processing time on machine a and then 33 minute processing time on machine b so as we said machine s machine a and b are both producing x and y but using different times so that is another constraint right you can see that there's a constraint here then at the start of the current week there are 30 units of x so we have been given an initial value of 30 and a 90 unit of y so available processing time on machine a is forecasted to be 40 which this is another limit to so machine a cannot produce more than 40 and machine b cannot produce more than 35 hours right so that is another time constraint upon our machines see the demand for x in the current week is forecasted to be 75 so it is 30 at the start then 75 at the end then it is 90 at the start for y and then at the end of the week it is 95 right so the difference between 90 and then 95 is 5 the difference between 30 and 75 is 45 very interesting now the company policy is to maximize the combined sum of product s and product y so this is going to be our objective function so that is what you're trying to maximize the combined sum of product x and then product y right so that is the basic idea so let's see how to solve it so this may take some time but let's start with it so first of all let's define so it's going to be let x right so s is going to be s s b for unit cancel unit x right right and then we're going to let y be for unit y right so that is the basic idea so we have two product s and y and we are using the variables x and y to help us with that then again from here it told us that machine a and b right both machine a and b produce the same thing so machine a so this is going to be our constraint constraints so from what we have learned above let me reduce it so that at least we can see it very well let me bring myself down i look big <laughs> okay so we have it here right so we said that machine a produce both s and y so that's going to be the first constraint so machine a right machine a is have is going to produce x and then also going to produce y right and machine b is also going to produce x and it's going to produce y but how many x does machine a produce so you see that each unit of x that is produced requires 50 units on a so that means that machine a produce 50 units right, 50 minutes just 50 minutes to produce one then 30 minutes to produce b right for on machine b the same x it uses 30 minutes so 30 minutes on machine b very interesting then why is why use 24 minutes for machine a is going to be 24 and then the same thing for the other one which is 33 right so that is something very simple so on machine a it takes 50 minutes to produce x and then 24 minutes to produce y in machine b it takes 30 minutes to produce x and then 33 minutes to produce y right that is a constraint that we have but that is the first constraint but if you read it again see that at the start of the week there is 30 units of x and 90 units of y that's another constraint that we also have but before we move on that say that the available processing time on machine a is forecasted to be 40 so the highest limit for this one is forecasted to be 40 so it can't be greater than 40 right? so it's going to be less or equal to 40 40 hours right so 40 hours means that you're supposed to convert it to minutes so it's going to be by 60 60 minutes right so that you get the correct minute the same thing happens here it's not supposed to be greater so it's going to be less or equal to 35 hours which is going to be 60 minutes right so that is this particular 
constraint here perfect now let's move on to what this is says at the start of the week there are 30 units of x so at the start of the, of the week there is an, another one that's going to be our another limit another one right we have so we have our start and then we have our end right so at the start of the week machine x has 30 or product s is 30 and then product y is product y is what 90 very interesting so we have 30 and then 90 very interesting and then also for at the end of it we forecasted that product s will be 75 and then product y will be 95 so this is going to be 75 and then this is going to be 95 right very interesting so within the week we are going to subtract 30 from 75 and then 90 from 95 to get the total sum that you are supposed to get so that, so that means we're going to be x plus y is expected to be subtracting 75 from 30 or 30 from 75 so let's make it a 75 minus 30 right that is the limit we're giving 30 and at the end of the week we had 75 so that is the limit so that's the difference then this one is also going to be 95 for at the end and at the beginning it was 90 right so that is how it's supposed to be so if i subtract this one from that so s plus y is going to be 45 minus 5 plus 5 further then this is going to be s plus y is going to be 50 right so that is another constraint that we have so we have this constraint there we also have another constraint here and then these are our variables so let's check for the object objective function so the objective function says that the company policy is to maximize the combined sum of the product which is what we have done here so this is going to be our objective function right supposed to maximize them supposed to add them together so this would be our max our objective function apologies for the noise behind it's going to be something very simple so it be s plus y minus 50 that is the objective function yeah, when i'm going to bring this 50 to this side very simple very nice now let's see how to write all of these things in code and see whether it's going to solve it for us so first of all step one define your variables so in that case we are going to create our first variable so let's call it as let's say capital s or you can make it any value that you want it to be so let's make capital x then i go with pop don't know whether you can see it or now we can make it big right at least we have solved it already so we can make it big so pop dot lp variable then i pass in capital x then the lower bound here let's make it zero you can use these ones that we had as our lower bounds but let's use zero so that it becomes simple for everybody then i'll copy this one here for the y so y product y right it's going to be the same thing above so we have defined our variables very simple right so it's giving us an error because it's supposed to be capital we are making mistakes <laughs> okay perfect so everything is working as expected now we have defined our variable so let's also define our objective function can I spell objective function so we are, we are giving our objective function to be the sum of them right so this is going to be our objective function so let's start with it so let's call that maximum profit that we want to get which is going to be pop.lp problem then let's call this max maximize our profit right then this can be anything that you want to do the main thing that we are doing which is going to be lp maximize perfect so we are done with it now let's add our objective function to this variable so max profit so plus is called keep on adding what, we, what are we adding we are adding this particular value here to get our maximum function so it's going to be x plus y minus 50 right that is what we are trying to do so that is our objective function defined right perfect that is all now the next thing is our constraint 
so the constraint is already the one defined here. so we have this our first constraint here right for product a and product b for machine a and for machine b then another constraint for the product you're supposed to get right so let's check it out so it's going to be this so i'll copy this one here and then you modify this one for constraints so i'll come back here so this is going to be a constraint right so let's modify it and make it beautiful so let's make it like this so we have max profit plus is equal to so let's see how to do that so it's going to be this 50 by x 50 times x right plus 24 by y right which must not be more than 40 so 40 by 60 so that is the result so 40 times 60 because you are quite converting 40 hours to minutes right by 60 minutes that's going to be the first one and we try the same thing for the second one which is going to be for the y for the machine b right so that is going to be 35 as we had above 35 hours then this is going to be for 30 and that is going to be 33 that is all right so this goes off we don't need this one even these are our machine constraints that is the first one right now we have to also add this constraint the constraint of the number of hours we need so this these are also constraint that you also need to add to it so it's going to be like this i come back here go back with max profit see how i spot profit plus is equal to the first constraint that s must not be more than capital s right s must not be more than so it's going to be it's equal to or greater than what we had right so we had it as 35 no 75 minus 30 and then 95 minus 90 so that's what you're trying to do so it's going to be 70 minus 30 75 rather this is going to be for the x and then this is going to be for the y see how it takes time to do all of these things right so once you're able to get your constraint everything is easier so this is going to be 95 and then, then the other constraint is going to be 90 right so at the end of the week we had 95 that is the basic idea so these are the constraints perfect so once you're able to do this everything is easy right if you make mistakes here it's going to affect the result the maximize optimization function is easy to get but the constraint is where sometimes you can have issues so let's check for let's solve it so it's going to be max profit dot solve if i check it out it's going to solve it perfectly for us and give us the right result perfect so that's finished and now i can come back and get our value so i'll go back to the top as we did and copy the same thing because it's the same thing so that we save our time because we are spending a lot of time here so i'll copy this one here so to preview everything that we have done right you can actually preview it although we have solved it but you can still preview it it's going to be our preview going to be max profit so let's print it out so if i check it out it's going to give us so what you are doing is that you are maximizing this this our objective function here these are our constraint constraints one two three and four and our variables are continuous so now i can put it here and then let's call this one max profit right if i check it out it's going to give us 45 and 60 very very interesting right so if i check our result, if i put this these 45 and 60 within our objective function we can also get a particular value so that's we can do it at pop dot value now pass in my max profit dot objective to 1.25 right that is the basic idea so if i check the diagram there's also an arm diagram you can see that the diagram is almost the same thing so we have 45 here right which was the same thing that we had here 45 and then 6.25 very interesting so that is how to do it in a diagrammatic form right very interesting so that is the basic idea behind trying to do linear programming using pop you can see that it is it's interesting but sometimes it takes a lot of time especially when you are giving something like this right it takes a lot of time to get the variables the objective function and the constraint but when you are giving something like this it is quite easy so these are going to be the constraints 
and then this is going to be your maximization function so thank you for watching this tutorial in case you have any question or contribution you can just put inside the comment section below and please don't forget to subscribe see you another time